Um, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here, particularly talking about collaboration. Um, I, I think it's a nice experience to have all my best lines stolen uh, by Duncan. That means we're all facing in the right direction. Um, what I'd like to do today is talk a little bit about collaboration, uh, and what we can do and what we are currently struggling to do. So economic crime is a problem and it's a problem that the financial sector takes very seriously indeed. We've called the levels of fraud currently a national security crisis. That we've heard about the, the response to the Russian invasion, how important that is. And taken in the round, it is an important challenge because if we don't win the challenge against illicit finance, uh, there's a lot at stake. There's the UK as an innovative and open society. So it's very important that we work together on it. Now, in terms of where we are at the moment, we know we can collaborate. We've collaborated for the last few years with the government, with law enforcement, with regulators and with civil society under the Economic Crime Plan Aegis. That has included intelligence sharing through the Joint Money Laundering Intelligence Task Force, including Transparency International and some others in that work. We've also worked on a cross-sector basis with telecoms industry, with the crypto sector even. And the key thing we found is you need to work hard at it. It is not easy. You have to come at it with different incentives and different requirements, but you can do it. And three years on, we now have some good news. I'm going to get into the good news, but I do want to strike a note of caution. I think it is the end of the beginning, not the beginning of the end. In terms of the other points I'd like to raise, the Economic Crime and Corporate Transparency Bill is pointing in the right direction. It is a great start. It will definitely bring the UK back in line with international good practice. But I use that term advisedly. It's good practice. It is not best practice. It is not the best we can do, especially not the UK working together in collaboration. So with that note of caution, the good news. We have, after three years, finally come up with a bill that is delivering a lot of the key priorities from our partnership work. Information sharing, corporate transparency, and powers for law enforcement to actually go after new forms of digitalised crime, including on crypto asset abuse. So that's great. We've also got some in international leadership. The UK's G7 presidency pushed you may have noticed quite hard for beneficial ownership reform that actually resulted in a result internationally. The Financial Action Task Force didn't just update their standards in March this year. They've also agreed a new consultation on updating the standards for trusts and legal arrangements, including legal, um, limited partnerships. And there'll also be some guidance on what best practice looks like for Companies House and other corporate registries. So that's great. We've also got Switzerland. I'll repeat that, Switzerland actually reforming its beneficial ownership registry. You've also got the US moving to establish it and the UK hopefully all moving in line with this new best practice guidance. Uh, and of course, let's look a little bit closer to home. We finally have a consultation on the statutory code for authorised push payment reimbursement, which will drive consistency across the industry. And last but not least, by any means, we finally got the beginning of the end on fraud in the payments journey. UK finance statistics for the first half of this year are showing a 13% reduction, which is great, not cause for complacency, but it's showing all this work can have an effect if it's only the beginning. So here's the but. Now the but is we have a bill that goes in the right direction but not far enough. Uh, and with great respect to Bayes and Company South, they have unfortunately demonstrated what you can do with extra legal powers, so they've whetted our appetite. We've done a lot of work with them in terms of data enrichment and bulk data sharing around Bibbles fraud, allowing the private sector access to information they did not have, allowing them to scope their reviews. Far better results in terms of conversion rate from red flags into real investigations and real support for asset recovery. So we want more, obviously. Uh, but we, we don't want it just for ourselves, we want this to be available to the entire regulated sector and on a legitimate basis to the civil society investigators that do so much work bringing <coughs> problems to light. Uh, there are also issues about verification. Verification of identity, it's great. It'd be good to know whether it is Mickey Mouse or Beyonce behind, behind the company. Um, but we still need to know whether or not it is Companies House that is verifying things. Are we actually going to find out whether they are the director, whether they are the beneficial owner? At the moment, that's not in the bill. The order making powers prohibit Company House from being able to be given those powers to verify. That falls short of minimum industry standards. It's an art to the possible here. There is not an easy way to do it, but the regulated sector somehow manages to do it, and they do it on reasonable grounds. They find a reasonable way to be assured that they are reasonably confident. Uh, that, I think, it gives more than enough wiggle room for the government and company's house to find a way to do something to actually verify, are you a beneficial owner? 
Equally, the trust company service provider sector, while it is getting increased improvement, it has been a problem child in the regulated sector. <coughs> there have been studies we did it jointly with uh, the Gimlet bodies and the National Crime Agency into particular problems in the TCSP sector, as it's called. And those problems led to remediation, but that remediation is ongoing. It behooves companies' house in their powers of reliance on verification by a third sector to check it knows what it's relying on. And again, there's a way around this, and we would be more than happy to help Companies House uh, take on some of the work we've done in the regulated sector, but there's a lot of good reg techs in there that are going to be desperate to help them do this properly. So anyway, on to the second bit of the bad news. The bad news is if we do get the legislation we want, and we get the powers we need, and we get the security we all deserve, we've then got the challenge of really collaborating. And to really collaborate, we can't just look at whether or not we're compliant. We can't just look about whether we're managing the risks in our own sector. We need to work out whether the people are doing what they're best at at the right time. Whether the public sector are managing risks first time at incorporation of companies. Whether the private sector is doing the best to help identify anomalies that are material to risk or whether it's just spelling mistakes. And whether we are all together passing intelligence that we need to law enforcement that is properly resourced to actually go after and disrupt these criminal gangs. That's going to be very difficult. At the moment, the regulatory regime incentivizes people to mind their own garden, uh, and I'm afraid we've all gone a long way past that in the regulated sector. Uh, we've had to. We have a national security threat crisis in fraud, and we have to uh, respond to the threat, again, a national security threat from hostile states. So uh, I'm very glad to be here. I'm very glad to be here on a collaboration platform, um, but I do think it's worth us looking forward to next year, where hopefully we can look at even more difficult problems. Thank you very much.